Hey everybody, and welcome back to some more Banished. So, I, I've let it run for just a bit, build up our population a little, get some extra labors going on, and um, essentially I wanted to collect up all this extra stone and iron lying around. So, I figure you, you don't need to see that, that's kind of just busy work. And now that it's, it's mostly getting finished up, I think that we're ready to proceed forward with uh, some of our big urban renewal plans. You can see I've also, uh, I've got here the, the hospital has been built. I also have a town hall. Now I expect, oh, in addition to that, um, I add in this building here, the boarding house. What the boarding house will do is if we get any nomads coming in, if any homes get destroyed by a tornado or a fire, people can go and live in the boarding house instead. So it's, it's kind of a handy building, but it's a situational building. It's not something that you're gonna be clamoring for immediately, but it's something that can really pay off in a pinch. Uh, I believe it can house 20 families. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but you can think of it as kind of a, a hotel that people can stay at while they wait for their house to get finished building. Speaking of houses, I've put in quite a few. I think we're actually a little bit over overstretched though. You see here, <laughs> that's an unfortunate name. <laughs> that's a very unfortunate name. But um, moral oral, anyway. Um, as you can see here, like some people are kind of moving in single homes and we don't really want that. So I'm going to put a pause on these other homes I put in. I have plans for some extra blacksmiths. Um, also probably will need a new tailor at some point. We're, we're getting a little low on stored clothes. So, uh, that's, that's something to keep in mind. And you see, I have another blacksmith ready to go here. Because our tools, I've been watching them, and uh, they've, they've, been, they've been dropping again. So, another thing that's interesting. So, I put in the tunnel. Yeah, all the villagers are just walking over this hill. <laughs> kind of makes me mad. It's like, why I waste all the stone on the tunnel? But I guess, I guess it looks nice. You know, it, it adds a little bit to the surroundings. So, we got an extra fishing village in here because I've been watching our food supply, and... It's going back up now, but it was starting to dip a bit, so it's something I was concerned with. Another thing I want to do, so we have another forest node in, but if you see here, essentially I've only assigned it to plant, because I wanted to build up a really dense old growth forest, because this is going to be our main herbalist node. Uh, I got one of two in here, but um, essentially it's, it's already producing twice the amount of herbs that uh, per season that our first one is doing. You see, they're not getting many herbs, mostly some logs. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to actually tear this down and possibly even take out one of these houses. And, and I'm doing that so that, you know, it'll just be a little bit more uh, forest land going on around here. And it really wasn't all that efficient anyway. So I don't know if it's really worth running two of these things when we could have two herbalists assigned to this very efficient one and just start cranking out the herbs here as opposed to kind of having them as an afterthought over here. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule that for demolition right now. Uh, remove structures. I'll leave, I'll leave one of the houses and, and see how the paving turns out. But that way our two herbalists will be working in our most efficient herb node. So that, that, should, that should work out better in the long term. Moving forward, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I honestly, this is just kind of comes down to adding in more forest nodes, collecting as much stone and iron that I can find. I got a little bit over here, so I'll go ahead and click. Oh, I guess that's already been scheduled. And what about all that too? Yeah, because we we have some pretty expensive projects, uh, you know, just in in the future. So. Stuff I want to kind of build, maybe not immediately, but soon. Uh, I'd like to get going on the chapel. I, I think it'll boost the happiness of all these little guys around. And, and I think it, it, it's a nice little central structure to have in what, what we're treating as kind of our main town. Uh, eventually, I want to add a school as well. And that'll probably go in about here. Because that's kind of a central location. It's near the market. And it'll just boost the happiness even further. But we're not going to put it in immediately, uh, since we're going for that uneducated. But thinking about this, uh, 130 stone is an awful lot of stone. 
I'm going to hold off on that just just a little bit a little bit more. Uh, wait till we've built up a good reserve. Uh, another thing I need to do is actually get going on our next Forester node down here. And that's leading up to having another little town center in here where we're, we're planning on putting in some mines and quarries as well as having this fishing village. So I, my idea is we'll have a little market here. That'll service sort of these two possibly, well, that will probably be visiting this, this market over here. But, you know, if that will provide for these guys and it will also help start building out in this direction where we can have sort of a second community going on this decade and getting us um, a more permanent stone supply and, and just some mines as well. So, not to mention, I think this will be a really good little fishing village. Get us, get us quite a good amount of food. So, uh, I definitely want to build that out. Uh, other than that, honestly, it kind of comes down to... Well, here, uh, this is a, a good... Uh, another... I, I'm tripping over my own words here, but another little spot I want to develop out is this. That'll make a good forest node. It's kind of close to town, and um, it could be a good log production, I think, since it's wide open and pretty flat. So uh, those are kind of the next two areas I'm going to put in. One here and one up here, especially because I want, to, I want this food supply to be cranked up because now that we have a town hall in place, as well as this uh, trading post pop down, that gives us all the prerequisites that we need to start getting nomads appearing. And you can see here, actually, uh, I have more homes and families. Generally, you want those to be about equal. So I'm gonna actually let the population grow a bit, fill out the homes before I add in these additional homes. So it, this, is, this is one of the handy uses of the town hall. You can look at that and see Oh, you know, I, I need, it's basically infographics that can be quite useful. And you see 0% educated, 100% clothed. That's, that's, that's good. We want everyone to have some clothing. Um, and also, since we're going for uneducated, 0% uh, educated is what we want. So, and you see here, so far, no nomads requesting citizenship. We'll keep an eye on that and kind of talk about nomads a bit more when they come in, into play. And also... The, it shows us sort of all the seeds and livestock that you have. So once we start trading, once we start building up a inventory of the different seeds and livestock, that's a good way to kind of keep track of it. You can just every so often look here and double check, make sure you aren't buying a second seed because you only, it's, seeds are interesting. They're not a resource. Seeds are essentially a thing you unlock and then you have. So as opposed to livestock, livestock is a resource. It's it's kind of a odd thing about the game. So once you buy a seed from a merchant, you always have it. You don't need to buy additional seeds for additional farms. So that's pretty handy. Uh, as for the livestock though, once you buy it, generally when you buy livestock, you want to have a ranch ready to go immediately. Because otherwise what can happen is the livestock can actually die of old age. And you need them breeding before that happens so that you have sort of a population building up. Now, when you purchase livestock, it initially is stuck in kind of a little holding pen at the trading post. And it's stuck there, you can't, it can't breed in the holding pen. So you generally want to move them immediately to your ranch and start working that ranch and breeding up a stable population. Otherwise, you know, you can pay a lot of money, buy all, the, all these cows, all these chickens, and then have nothing to show for it. So that, that's a little tip just to be aware of. Some other stuff going on at the town hall. Now it shows us our production, which is really, this is probably the most useful panel out of the entire town hall. Uh, most useful use besides it attracting nomads. The, It'll, it'll show you actually like how much food you're using per year and how much you are producing. Now, if you look here, we actually produce barely more than we used last year. So that's, that's kind of alarming. That's, that's not a good thing. We're, we won't be building up a good reserve of food stock so that when we do get nomads, we'll be able to adapt and adjust to having extra mouths to feed. Um, I'd like to actually upper food production. There are a few, few ideas I have for that. One is I can actually add in some more hunting nodes to our existing 
um, our existing nodes here. And, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's um, They're not the most efficient way of getting food, but apart from adding in more gathering nodes, uh, and you, uh, you don't want gathering huts to overlap, that's wasteful, but hunting lodges, they actually kind of, they, you, you can actually put two hunting lodges in a single forest node. I wouldn't recommend it. It does cut in efficiency a little bit, but it doesn't cut in efficiency nearly as much as it does with the gathering hut. You really you can't support more than one gathering hut per forest node, so that's something to keep in mind. Hunting, it's, it's kind of, um, it'll cut into production a little bit, but it's not 50-50 split. So uh, you can sometimes add in an extra hunting lodge in a forest node that already has it. But I, what I'm thinking is we might as well go ahead and put in some hunting lodges in the, the forest nodes that don't already have a hunting lodge. It, it can't hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now while I'm thinking about it. Actually, let's pin, let's pin that guy just so... Just so we have an idea where where ideal placement would be. Um, honestly, yeah, kind of around here. Hmm. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put it here, and I'll extend the road. That that makes the most sense. And there'll be a little. You'll see that there'll be a little bit of overlap between this one. Go ahead and pin it as well. And the one I'm putting in here, but not too much. If I, I scoot this over here, I think that'll be okay. Um, I might actually put in like a bridge going out this way. I don't think it affects the, the rate though that hunt, like I don't think hunters have to actually physically cross the bridge to still get use out of land. So what I might do it anyway though, so that the, let's see. Well, he's right up on the edge of it, actually. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. If it's a little bit inefficient, it's a little bit inefficient. It's still better than not having one at all. So, let's go ahead and I'll extend these roads out so that it's just easier for the hunters to do their work and spread around. I might need an additional house there as well. I'm going to go ahead and put one in. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I kind of need to take the paving tool to it and double check, make sure that... Actually, yeah, let's, let's grab our path tool and just kind of, well, we'll click on, oh, you have to have it playing. We'll, we'll crank it down on one time speed. Okay, so, so far, ooh, see, yep, I, I do need some more. Actually, honestly, I need like two or three more houses here. So let's go ahead and put them in. You see, they're, they're walking way too far to actually get over to this area and work it. Um, it's always a good, a good kind of rule of thumb to just check your paving every so often. That one's good. Um, that one, not not the best actually with it living with them living over there. As well as oh, that's because I took out. That's what happened. I had a house here, and I took it out to put the road in, and I never replaced it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, just keep checking with the paving tool. But again, you know that that shows you like. Looks like we need more homes here, but I'm gonna wait and see what happens when we take this out. I, I suspect that will actually kind of fix it up a bit. Now the, the fishermen, those guys should be fine. Huh. That's strange. What well, who's living here? Fishermen from over there. That's why. Okay, let, let me check this house. Who's working here? Gather in a late okay, so. It looks like the inefficiencies of not having enough houses here are kind of pushing people out here. So you see that it causes this kind of cascade effect and it's a real problem actually. So so for now, I'm, I'm gonna like leave these homes open. Hopefully as we add them in over time, they'll, they'll fix the situation a bit. And that, that's just something I should have been paying attention to. Let's see, low on firewood. We seem to really be dropping in firewood, unfortunately. I, I feel like I should have enough, but I think the issue is less that I don't have enough woodcutters and more I'm not making enough of the, of the actual logs. And part of that might be because I am building so much that all available logs are going towards our building. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, we don't need to follow these hunting cabins since I've put them in. 
Let's see, let's see. Hunting cabin there. So we're gonna have a lot more hunters. That, that should kind of like fill these things out and make them more complete. So, so that's that's a good that's a good thing. I'm also working on this one, getting it built here. Uh, let's let's go ahead and put in. I know there's an awful lot of me sort of just fixing things up, adding to it a bit. Okay, we'll do a five by five stockpile just right next to our forester. Now let's go ahead and get the gather started there. And, and as well as that, um, we also want to get some houses in. So, that's slow but surely building it out. It's it's going pretty well for the most part. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put in four for a start. I, I would like to kind of build up our labor pool a bit and, and start to think about quarries because the laborers are doing an okay job of going out and picking out the stone, but it, it the walk that they have to do to get stone is getting just more and more, and eventually it'll become a real problem. Like we won't have any convenient stone lying around, which is which is a bad thing. We, we don't really want that. Um, other than that, I'm actually going to crank up the speed and, and let them go for a while just to get some of these buildings built and, and kind of, you see, like, good, we're hiring more kids, so we always want, that's, that's good news, you always want to see that happening, especially early game where you're trying to build up. Right now we're up to, let's see our overview, we have, let's see, 118, so definitely climbing up there, uh, one, one third of the way to our 300 goal. Hopefully we'll get a nomad or two, like a nomad van coming in, because right now it's it's just linear growth. Well, I want to see some uh, exponential growth, but you don't really see that until you start trading for seeds, because it takes some time for these buildings to fill out and, and all that. So. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of keep following that paving tool, but okay, at the limit for tools. Um, I think that's okay for now. I'm going to want to crank the limit for tools up to 100 fairly soon. I'm also going to open up some of, some of these. But let's check the the houses around our our middle town. Figure out where where people are living. See, that's, that's an awful long walk for the gather, so hopefully adding in a couple extra houses, like here and there, will we'll remove that issue. Um, that's fine, got a vendor living there, no one in there yet. Um, let's see, stone, yeah, stone's low just because they have to go out, it's tough to go out and hunt it down. Yeah, and what happened here was I built up all these guys in the center of the town when I should have been adding more homes to the outside. So over time, I'm ho hopeful that that will, will correct some of that. Let's get our extra blacksmith going on. Now, I'm tempted to put in a brewer. Let's, let's go in and do it. Uh, just because, uh, eesh, what, what is going on? Yeah, the stone reserves. Stone is early game, always, always a constant thing that you struggle with, so. How's the building coming along down here? Okay, they're getting there. We'll let this node be completely full and have some hunters before we start building a node here and, and possibly one over here as well. Maybe even two. Yeah, the firewood supply is definitely getting low. I think we'll be okay. Uh, we don't... Firewood is one of those things that you don't want it to get too low, but at the same time, if you have warm coats, it's less of a concern uh, mm -hmm. since generally it takes a, it takes almost half the winter for any workers outside to get cold. Uh, but this is getting kind of bad though, where you have that many homes. Um, hopefully, we'll get lucky and like the uh, we won't have any people freezing to death. I I'm almost tempted. I do. I need more logs. Is what it kind of comes down to. And you'd think I'd be producing enough of all these forester lodges, but... Yeah, you see here, let's see, only 18 stored logs and zero stored firewood. It, it might also just be an issue of logistics, like... 
Maybe a couple more vendors to pull logs into the center of town where most of our builders are. Let's see, we have a brewer. A brewer. I'm going to get the brewer going, and I'm going to set them to berries. And, and we'll watch our food supply. If our food starts to drop down, it's something that we're going to have to handle. So... It's just some. This what this will help our happiness a bit, and um, I think I explained in the other episode. But just as a little recap, what this does. Okay, another old age. Oh yeah, yeah. And you can see in our cemetery, it's actually starting to fill up a bit. So we might need another one fairly soon. Um, yeah, the, the way happiness works is occasionally your villagers will get bored of work and they'll just kind of play hooky and wander around. Now if they're happy activities that they can do. Instead of spending a lot of time idling, they'll go do the happy activity. Then they'll feel they'll feel re reinvigorated, re-energized. You know, <laughs> they've gone. They've had their little pint, or they they got their prayer on, and they're ready to get back to work. So that's um that that's kind of how that w works. And you know, it's kind of an interesting um thing. And and if you see a lot of villagers villagers idling, it's because they're unhappy and and they need to. to just kind of let off some steam so that's what the happiness buildings do they prevent idling from getting out of control uh, as for graves so graves they basically they prevent unhappiness from old age related deaths um, the other interesting thing about them is I didn't realize this but over time yeah yeah see this is gonna fill up pretty quickly but over time about it takes like a generation the tombstones will kind of decay and recycle, and then you'll be able to reuse the the cemetery. But it, it does take a little bit of time. Now let's check. Uh, okay, good. We have. Let's assign six, our six more hunters. So that that should start pulling in a bit more food. Hunters aren't like the best when it comes to food, but they're better than nothing. <laughs> so it's something to keep in mind. Firewood being low. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I'm going to put in another little firewood hut over here, I think. Just just get a woodcutter going and... Oh, will it fit? Oh, just barely, but... But, no, they won't... They won't have it. Um, okay, we'll put him there, the stockpile there, and kind of the home there. That should be fine. There's a little stockpile, like a 5x5. Five five. Maybe the home there. Actually, we'll do it like that, and then have the road going out. Now, let's go ahead and put this road in, and this is where we're going to have another forest node kind of feeding this woodcutter. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, yep. Just as we develop and grow out, it, you know, I feel like we're moving at a pretty good pace. We're having a lot of births going on, and our labor pool keeps building, so that's nice to see. Do I want to on this side, or switch it around? I think I'm going to switch it around. Yeah, I'll put it there. Seems like a plan. Now, I don't know uh, if you guys have been following my scrap mechanic series, but I guess I'll go ahead and, and kind of explain why I haven't been able to put out any videos. Uh, unfortunately, it um, ever since the last bug hotfix, it, it just doesn't... All my videos that I've recorded have turned out corrupt. Uh, they don't have any timestamps, and... It's, you know, it's, I can't figure out how to fix it. So, I'm kind of tempted to just say, you know, that's season one. And we'll hop back into it whenever the next, um, wow, we were getting a lot of old HFs. Let's get a second woodcutter, or fifth woodcutter. Yeah, I definitely need to think about putting in another graveyard. And I'm not sure where I want it. Um, I'll, I'll think, I'll think on it. <laughs> um, Probably, actually, the idea would be to put it kind of around, like, here, or something of that nature, so, because this is where, we're, if we're going to have a big, like, mining community, you want the happiness in this area to be high and offset by, um, just, oh, that, that, that was bad. We had a few people showing cold. They, they, their houses managed to get warm in time, but, 
uh, that's dangerous. If they were cold and they went to a, a house without firewood, um, they were frozen to death. So, I, I, I'm actually, let's, let's crank it down. This firewood thing is becoming a crisis. So, I mean, I'm kind of surprised because it looks like storage-wise, you know, it could be a vendor issue. I'm going to crank this all the way up to like eight. Heck, I don't, I'm tempted to crank up to 12 even. We have enough laborers, we might as well do it. That way, that will help redistribute, especially if you look around the town, it looks like they're having problems with acquiring firewood, so that should help a little bit. And see here, if, if they go to a house that is cold, they might, oh, this guy might be in trouble. Oh dear. Um, yeah, we, we might, we might lose them. They might be able to warm up. Okay. Sometimes they can actually, like, kind of switch houses and, and go to the neighbor to warm up, but, yeah, this is making me nervous. It's a shame, too, because, I mean, that guy should be making a ton of firewood. It's just, it's like the foresters. Oh, that could be an issue. Let's crank up the foresters, too. Uh, any other things that need to be cranked up while I'm looking at... No, it looks like we filled out our jobs. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about the firewood situation. I might not... I might even need, like, even another one of these guys going on, because it's getting a little bit out of control. And that's dangerous. I, I really don't... Especially this early in the game, you don't want to lose too many people just to freezing to death. It's kind of a silly way to lose them. Yeah. Where can I put another one? It's it's tough because we should have a ton of wood going in. I think I just have kind of a glut of building. And because of that, all the all the available wood, all the logs essentially, instead of going to these woodcutters, went to the buildings and that's kind of a bad situation. Let me double check my house to my um let's see. So yeah, it looks like families and homes have caught up, which, which explains why our population has been growing too. So yeah, I need I honestly I need to get more houses built as well. What I might do since we have a lot of labors and running out of firewood is, is bad. We, we, we shouldn't have to do that. I'm going to clear out, let's see, kind of that. Let them, let them cut down a whole bunch of trees because if we don't get a handle on this, like kind of get caught up on our, our backlog, um, maybe put like another little three by three and, and maybe one more here just to speed them up. Um, if we don't get caught back up on that, People are going to start freezing to death, and it, it's such an easy death to avoid. It's just that I, this is uh, this thing I'm talking about, like realistic emergent properties. So, what have I done? I've gone through a, a fairly major population boom, and I've expanded very quickly with my industry, but as a result, I've kind of taken away any convenient sources of, say, stone i've used up i've used up all the storage that we had when it came to our logs and now since logs are an essential resource for say making firewood it's looking like oh no i don't have enough firewood so to offset my overconsumption, i've been forced to clear cut some valuable land like this is going to take a while to regenerate this could have been another forest node and in the long term that that's kind of going to cut down our, our maximum efficiency for our little village here. So that's very telling. That's exactly what is happening right now in China. Um, because the Chinese, you know, they, they want, they're desperate to, and honestly, I don't blame them for it. They, they're looking at how well the West is doing and they want to modernize. And the only way to, to offset the fact that they kind of lack some natural resources is to import, is to draw from other areas, and, and it's really affecting Southeast Asia in particular uh, when it comes to biodiversity, because 
you know, um, the Chinese, in order to feed all the construction, feed the growth of their cities, they're borrowing um, essentially stored up uh, lumber reserves from all these ancient, ancient rainforests in Borneo, in Indonesia. And as a result, I mean, it's good for the economy in those areas, but not for the environment. And, and I mean, it's, it's easy to sit back and kind of be critical of folks for, for, you know, it's like, why can't they not, you know, why can't they harvest slower? Why do they have to consume as quickly as they do? But the United States consumes quickly, you know, it's, it's like, it's awfully hypocritical to criticize the Chinese for environmental degradation when, you know, honestly, like a lot of it is fed by our demand for goods and our demand for Chinese manufacturing. So, you know, it's, it all comes full circle. We're all connected. And I, I, I kind of hold to the idea that eventually what's going to happen is, you know, the idea of national governments is going to fall by the wayside. And we'll focus a lot more on, I'm just kind of cleaning up to see if there's any little bits of iron I miss. And there is. So, uh, But we're going to shift our focus away from national to kind of a global government. Um, dedicated to environmental pr preservation and uh, um, just, I'm going to also put a little stockpile in here because we'll have to it's it's a survival thing like as a species no one nation is capable of handling some of the environmental destruction that's going on right now and, and fixing it um, if, if we're going to hope to survive at least at least hope to not have a severely diminished and ruined earth um honestly the only way that we manage that is to come together as a group and to stop seeing it as you know it's us versus them it's it's all of us together i don't know it, <laughs> some people might think that's kind of hippy dippy nonsense but i i think it's kind of where the tide of history is taking us so yeah and and there i go again like kind of getting not so much political but just just with my environmental rants. <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, I've seen firsthand, like, what conspicuous American consumption does to other nations. I actually did a work study program out in Honduras, and, um, one of our sort of guides when we went to the rainforest, he, very interesting life story. He was actually sort of, um, he was an environmentalist, but he was also in the military. And what happened was they had a populist president who wanted to preserve um, the environmental heritage of Honduras and really crack down on illegal ranching. And what illegal ranchers would do is they go out into the rainforest, cut down, strip, essentially strip the land bare, and then they'd graze for one or two years and then move on. Uh, and and the, the, the tragedy of it is, I mean, the ranchers knew exactly what they were doing. It's not like they're ignorant and they were surprised that the rainforest wouldn't grow back because essentially rainforests are, um, how do I explain it? They don't store nutrients. All nutrients in the rainforest are almost immediately recycled. So the soil has only like one or two years worth of good nutrition in it before it gets used up. And the way it maintains itself is essentially being highly biodiverse and just having so many different animals and plants and fungi that are um, uh, dedicated to taking back nutrition and putting it directly back into the environment. It's all very finely uh, and delicately balanced. So when you clear out the trees, that whole thing collapses and then you have soil that has never had like hundreds and hundreds of years of nutrient buildup. So the soil fails. And the ranchers know this. It's just that at the same time, you know, like, yeah, they, they know that if they go and clear cut this one area of jungle or rainforest, it's, it's not coming back anytime soon. Um, but in the meantime, they've got kids to feed and they're in desperate poverty. And the idea is they can get rich if they go and they do this legal cutting and then sell the beef to say McDonald's. Um, 
And the problem is uh, the ranchers, they get very rich doing this. And because they get rich, they get very powerful. And essentially they rebelled against this populist government, this guy who wanted to cut down on illegal ranching, who wanted to have the army actually keep pace. Um, this is this is bad. They're they're way out there and they're cold. Let's let's follow them. Cause if they don't get back and get warm, we're gonna have a freezing death. This could be our first freezing death. Yeah. That's not good. Uh I should build a road here so that they're not going that way far out and then getting stuck and then getting too cold. Yeah, I should be able to get a road just going this way. Uh, I hope he makes it. That's an awful long distance for him. If he's already cold, like, I want this right up against. Kind of, We'll have it come in a little bit, but maybe not all the way, because I, I want it to be sort of centered with the mark and all that. But, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. It looks like they're going to make it back in time. So... That was close though. They were very close to freezing to death. Okay. And jump fishermen. That's strange. Okay, they're warming up. That's, that's, phew. That was close. Yeah, you gotta watch that. Like, actually, labors are. Sometimes you'll see, like, a ram starvation death, and you'll be looking at your food and going, well, I don't understand that. I have plenty of food stored. And the reason for it is it's a laborer that has been assigned a task like to go clear out some stone way out here. And they walk so far that by the time they're walking back, they're already starving to death and they don't make it all the way back to their home. Um, it can be quite tricky actually. So I'm hopeful with these logs getting cut down, uh, this might help our log production some. I'm not sure. I'm also watching our food's going down. I think it has to do with um, having an, a tavern making ale. Now our happiness, as you saw, it went up quite well. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I am a little concerned by how low the food is getting. Let, let's look at, I wanna see if our production is outpacing our, yes, yes it is, which, Let's see, last year, it was very close to being an even split, and it looks like this year, we're actually way outpacing it. And part of that is that we have so many kids. Let's see, gathers, um, I really need to get more gathering put in, that might help it. And it looks like they're building here, so that's good. Any, any other like hunting that I can do or... Yeah, it's tricky before farmland. Now, if I had farms, all, all I would have to do is kind of clear some land, plant more farms to offset this. And farms, make, they do make a lot of food in a, an efficient space. They don't, it, it's funny, like, um, basically gathers, you get efficiency, but the efficiency comes mm -hmm. from you know, the, these four gathers are collecting more food per person than any other task or job, but they're inefficient in terms of just the space that they need. So, hmm. Well, this, this is definitely, we're in a bit of a bind here because we're making food, but just not enough to like be sustainable. Yeah, we're, we're slightly, see, we're gonna start slightly cutting into our food supply. And part of that is just like, you know, look at this, 37 kids. That's fairly, for an early town, that's, that's actually a bit. So, hmm, we're also like, not getting caught on our firewood whatsoever. It's tricky, sometimes you, you get overstretched and you have too many, too many people. And, you have to play catch up somehow. Like, like what I should probably do is put in like two more of these, and then let them let them fill all these up, and then shut them down. Um, yeah, because let's see. Yeah, it's uh, yeesh. 
I'm not I'm not feeling all that confident right now. That's a that's a, this is a bad situation, especially because it looks like our laborers are kind of busy doing this, like scooping up all the stone and iron way out here instead of cutting down those trees. So um, another thing I can do while I'm thinking about it, if this is going to be it's, this isn't a forest node, this is a mining area so I'm gonna remove like every tree down here and here hope hopefully do that actually mark them yeah hopefully that'll get us caught up here because you know our firewood is getting worse and worse actually okay let's let's is that road complete What I should do is just go and put in some of the mines and a second church and cemetery. Well, I haven't even built this church, but you see, I didn't really need it though. The tavern's taking care of it. Hmm. It's pot. I mean, I don't know if A4 berries is going to get us caught up to this deficit though. Um, it, it'd be a little bit helpful. Goodness. What I need is to get this built and this finished up and I think that will bounce things out let's let it play at a faster pace for a little bit and also gotta stop building homes at this point I'm having too many there's too many babies around and that's the thing you know children they they're vital to the future of your group but they aren't going to um, they don't make food <laughs> so but let's check the paving as well. Okay, that looks fine. Good. Uh, it looks like our paving is tidying up a bit, which is what I wanted to see. That's a hunter. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Um, I could maybe add a second, another house here, but I'm gonna go easy on that. Just a bit. Let's see. Got a gatherer here. I, I have gatherers at everyone, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like it. And here, that's, that's still pretty tight, that's good. I need, I need to figure, I only have a couple of years to figure out the food supply. I'm hoping adding these nodes will do it, but, where are these guys? They're, okay, I need more houses. I, just, I know I just said I, I should watch my houses because I'm getting too many kids, but I do need more so that they're not walking too far. That might be enough. And I'm going to add an, a woodcutter around here as well, just so, to supply all these homes and help out with these homes because you can see they're starting to get cold as well. So let's, um, let's pin this radius. I'm going to put it right at just... Actually, I think I'll put them in here because I'll be a little bit closer to everyone else. Let's, uh, let's do that. Kind of just line up in the middle a little bit. And there. Five by five and another, another woodcutter hut. That should help. Um, yeah, because, see, unfortunately, you get in these situations where you're drawing so much, every time you cut some, you immediately use it up, and you can never start to fill up any of these backlog ones, so you have to kind of outpace it when, when you get stuck in those situations. So far, we've been doing, basically what's happening is, like, they'll go cold, but before they get cold and... You have a cold villager try to go and warm up. It gets an, just enough firewood, and so we're we're keeping like even on our firewood consumption. But I want to get ahead of it. I, I need to have a big supply, especially because later down the road, what we want is to actually use the firewood as a trading tool. So we want a big surplus of it, actually. So I just need to get caught up, and the way to do that is to add in extra woodcutters. So we're getting there. <laughs> 